Rarely, though, does the intersection of ocean stewardship and societal demands meld so seamlessly. And nowhere has a challenge been so deeply tested than in America's most beloved coral reef, where businesses depending on the ocean have collided in the Florida Keys. I used to get uh, calls by the dive operators who would be complaining about the charter fishing boats that would troll close to the reef and their fish would get hooked on and they would wrap around divers and I would get calls from families that were upset that people were spearfishing right next to them at, at one of the reefs or I'd get calls from dive charter boats who had tropical fish collectors collecting right on the top of the reefs where they were. So there were all these conflicts in these areas. 20 years ago, Billy Causey went from earning his living catching fish to protecting fish as the first manager of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. The immediate response from Causey's own community would come to symbolize the rough waters of marine conservation in a world of competing uses. The process got so contentious in 1992 that I was hung in effigy. And I, I don't really like to talk about that because it was a tough day for me. So uh, I was part of the crowd with the, with the rope and the crosses at first outside of Billy Causey's window when they, won, when they hung him in effigy. Causey forged ahead, forming the nation's first Sanctuary Advisory Council, gathering all that had a stake in the health of the Keys. The council adopted a special set of marine zones to protect the Keys' sensitive reefs by separating conflicting uses. And ironically, in separating the people, it brought them together. It works out fine for us. I don't know any charter boat fishermen here that would say that the uh, sanctuary preservation areas have hurt their business. I don't know anybody that would say that. Anybody who doesn't re revisit a decision that, that you, you have a question about uh, makes a big mistake in life. Uh, so I, I revisited, that, revisited that decision and said, well, maybe it was the right thing because I'm still catching fish here. I'm not fishing there, but I'm, I'm still catching fish there. So what did it really take away from me? So is it really hurting me? No, and if it does some good, so much the better. And then when you see that it does some good, they said, hey, maybe we should close some other areas. The tourists that come down here spend $1.2 billion every year. And that's before the economic multipliers kick in. Someone has to be here to keep a pulse on the, this environment while the four million visitors come down every year to enjoy this environment. It really worked out, you know, in our best interest that they're protecting these resources because what they protect helps us in the long run. 